do you feel like your prayers lack power or effectiveness? On today's Move Your Mountain, we're going to learn how the Lord desires for you and I to pray with authority. You don't want to miss today's program. We're also going to enjoy anointed worship that will usher in the presence of the Lord. We're going to take Holy Communion together, so make sure you get your elements. And then as always, we will conclude here at the altar praying for you. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh. Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us on today's Move Your Mountain. You know, there is a real expectancy among us today as we're just believing for the presence of the Lord to manifest and show up in a very tangible and wonderful way to minister to you. So we're glad you've tuned in believing this is a divine appointment for you. I'm Pastor Gary, here with Pastor Myra, Pastor Jonathan, and Pastor Rebecca. And I tell you, there's excitement in the air. There is. I think every time we get together, there is excitement in the air because we know that God is a miraculous God who is able to do beyond what we could ever think or imagine. That's what his word says. Mm -hmm. And I am thankful for that today. And I'm thankful that you are tuning in and going to receive from the Lord what it is that you're needing. We've already prayed for this program and we're going to continue in our hearts to pray for it as we're speaking. But we're expecting of what God is going to do, not only here in the studio, but in your life today. Amen. I expect things to do what they're supposed to do. So, <laughs> yeah. so when I leave my home in the morning, I expect my car to turn on and I expect it to drive. And in the same way, I have full expectancy and assurance that right. Jesus is going to do what he said he would do because I have full expectancy and assurance that Jesus is who he says right. that he is. And so if you are a follower of Jesus today, let me encourage you that Jesus is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He is seated on the throne. He himself is interceding on your behalf right now. Yeah. And we can expect powerful things, Pastor Myra, yeah. because he is yeah. who he says he is. And that's what makes, to me, makes all the difference in the world mm -hmm. because our God loves you as well as we are, are excited about his love and what he does for us. We're excited about what he's yes. going to do for you today. Mm. So put, you, you call them expectors, put your expectors out <laughs> and look for God to move within you as well as around you. Yes. Look for it, Amen. expect it from him. Expectancy is the breeding ground for the miraculous. So if you need a miracle, if you need prayer today, mm -hmm. remember the prayer partners are available. The number is there on your screen, 888-665-4483. Or you can email us at prayer at ctvn.org. After the prayer partners pray and we receive your requests, we're going to join the four of us at the altar, setting ourselves in agreement, praying with you. Remember, we're also going to take Holy Communion together today. So make sure you get your elements, a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup, so that you can participate and join in with us. Well, we've got a great word for you today. Let's go to the Gospel of Mark chapter 1. It says, Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately... On the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and he taught. And listen to this. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as 
the scribes. The first thing we need to understand is Jesus' teaching stood out different than the regular teachers, the scribes, what the Pharisees and the scribes were teaching. Why? Because he taught them with authority. And there is the authority of Jesus that the Lord desires for you and I as new Testament believers to embrace and to walk in. Amen. And that's what we see in the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, where Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. And then his very next words are, Go. And the, the, the implication there is that it's you and I, his disciples, yes. who go, and we go in that same power. We go in that same authority because he says he will be with us surely, even to the end of the age. And so Jesus is constantly with us. His presence provides the necessary authority. But the thing I love the most is that his authority was seen when he was teaching his word. Mm -hmm. The word of God has power. That's why we begin every program with an amazing message from the word of God. Why? Because it stirs our faith. It creates the right atmosphere because we've been hearing the truth of God and in the truth of God and in the word of God, we hear the will of God and it's God's will for you to be healed. It's God's will for you to be delivered. And so this authority comes from the word. And so we just, we just send the word to you right now. Yes. We send the word to whatever you're dealing with, whatever situation or struggle or trial, God's word is bigger because he's given us yeah. his authority yeah. by giving us his word. Yeah, yeah. As you were reading that passage, I was thinking about that uh, in the scriptures, I believe it's in the Proverbs, that it's where it says, there's power in the words of the king. Mm. Our Christ, our Savior is a king and he has authority. In that passage, it talks about who is going to question the king's word. Do you, que do you question the, the, the word of Jesus? You get to the place, you learn, you grow and find out, hey, I can depend on this word. Yes and stand on this word. And that's what he wants us to do. There's something about the word of God, yes. standing on it, uh, uh, resting in it. God will do through us and in us what needs to be done. There is power mm -hmm. and authority. Power is the ability to do something, but the authority is having the right to do it. And we have the right to speak yes. the word of God. Yes. We have the right to stand on the word of God and say it in power because he has given us the right to be God's children. Amen. And that should encourage you today when you're watching to know that God has given you authority. God has given you that power through his word. You know, I can only imagine being there and them saying, the scribes, they, they didn't have this kind of power. There's something different about this Jesus that is speaking. He has God's authority. He has something different about him. Can I tell you, you have something different about you than the world. When you get into the word of God, when you ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate it, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you begin to speak, those words have authority and power. You're not any longer speaking in your authority. It's one thing if I say, well, I'm, I'm telling you to do this. But if I say, God said to do this, if his word says to do it, we need to listen. Again, we can get into the shady area of where people tell you what to do in the spiritual realm too. But if it doesn't line up with the word of God, that's the more sure word of prophecy. That's what we have to listen to. So get into your word, get into that word that is the authority that you need to get through this life. I don't know how people get through just day to day, not getting in the word of God, getting that life, that marrow to our bones in our spirit life. I want to encourage you today, if you're not daily reading the word, get into it. I'm thankful that you've tuned in where you can hear the word of God, but it's important to, to read his word and understand the authority that is in there. You don't need to sit back and take a back seat any longer when the enemy comes in. You can stand on the word. When the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. And that comes through reading and understanding the authority that you have in the word of God today. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then after you read the word, speak the yes. word, pray the word, yeah. declare and decree it in Jesus' name. There's power in the word of God. 
Then it says in Mark 1 verse 23, Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, mm -hmm. the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. And secondly, we have authority to cast out demons. We have authority over the power of the enemy in our lives. We have an adversary, the Bible says. We have an opposer, but thank God we can take authority over him. Absolutely, absolutely. I think about that passage in James that says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Oh, it would only be for a season that he runs away. But we have the power. Jesus said, we've been given power to cast out demons, cast out those spirits. There's somebody watching, that's why I paused. Somebody's watching today and at your job, they are acting out. The, the atmosphere at your job is almost unbearable. But God said, go into that atmosphere and speak in authority and peace will come. Things will subside. The adversary has to back up because you are there, because you come in and inside of you, yes. child of God, is the spirit of God, the power of God. So speak it. Don't be af afraid or ashamed God knows who you are, and guess what? So does the adversary. Absolutely, right. and that's why he would love to convince you right now that you don't have this authority over them. The, 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 the devil's power lies in deception. And if he can get not just the people of God, I've seen people that have no idea of the authority that God's given them to cast demons out. Mm -hmm. But if he can keep people that don't know God yet, to believe that they just have to succumb to the mm. to not just the demonic things that are happening into their life. A lot of times we invite these things into our lives. But right now we we live in a nation that's under a demonic cloud. Just deception mm -hmm. through the media. Just 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 getting people's minds perverted through propaganda and leading us further and further away from God. Mm -hmm. But we don't have to worry. We do not have to be afraid. Why? Because we have the authority over demonic spirits because Jesus, who is alive inside of us yeah. by his Holy Spirit, gives us that power. So right now, whatever you're facing in your life, maybe it's a, a situation that's in your family where it's just not, it's not natural unrest. There's just something that's going on. Take time, use the gift of discerning of spirits and cast that thing out of your life. Mm -hmm. If you're that individual that's watching that Pastor Myra just spoke about who has, pray and seek the Lord and say, Lord, where do I need to uproot this demonic influence so that peace can come in my workplace? You, brother and sister in Christ, have the authority to cast out demons. And authority is useless unless we use it. That's right. You know, the word of God tells us be sober, vigilant, because the adversary, the devil goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And it's so important that we are aware and that we are alert of the things that are going on around us, that we just don't fall asleep thinking, well, this is just life. This is how it's going to be. But when you go into that situation at work or in your family, in your home, wherever it might be, and you feel this heaviness, this burden, this chaos that seems to be going on, don't just brush it off. Don't just push it to the side thinking, oh, it's going to go away. No, again, take that authority that you have in Jesus Christ yes. and say every unclean spirit, everything that is coming in and trying to take authority in my life, I come against you, not in my name, but in the name of Jesus and cast that thing down because God doesn't want you to have to be under that burden, under that pressure, under that oppression. 
He has given you authority to come out of that and he's given you authority to call it out. Don't be timid. You might say, well, I'm not the kind of person that speaks very much. I'm not the kind of person that, that has a lot. Call it out. Let it be known that you recognize what is happening and you see that there's a difference. There's a shift in the peaceful atmosphere of your home. Call it out and say, Satan, you have no authority here. God has all authority. I speak peace into my home. I speak peace on my job. It may even mean that you have to go to someone and you may have to pray with that individual where you feel that their life, that you see their life is out of chaos or bringing chaos into yours. Just take the authority that you have and pray with them and stand on God's word. Stand on the authority that God has given you to cast those things out that are bringing confusion and disruption in your life. Amen. The Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. <laughs> it's a spiritual battle you are facing. Mm -hmm. But you have the authority. Jesus said, behold, I give you the keys. Keys in the scripture always signify and symbolize authority. And he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I like the translation that says, whatever you permit shall be permitted and what you forbid shall be forbidden. So stop permitting yeah, that's it. That's it. things in your home, <coughs> in your workplace, in your yes. school, in your church, yes. in the relationships in your life. If they are not of God, use your authority right. and bind them and take authority over them. So and in Mark 1, verse 27, it says, Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all of the region around Galilee. Can I be honest with you? This was not anything new. This might have been new to the people hearing it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And maybe you're watching. And maybe you've been in a church or grew up in a denomination that didn't teach you about right. spiritual warfare. Didn't teach you about authority of a believer, didn't teach you about deliverance. And maybe this sounds new or different to you. Mm -hmm. But my third point is, it's biblical. If we could back it up with the word of God, yes. then we need to be able to embrace and believe it. And my third point is simply this, this is nothing new. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a situation that happened in my life not too long ago where I just got to that point where I couldn't do anything about it. Have you been there? I'm sure you have. There's situations where you just can't do anything about it. And you just get to that point where it drives you to your knees and you say, God, I need you to take care of this for me. I need you to handle this situation. And can I tell you, we talked about the authority and the power coming in. I can tell you at that very moment when I resigned that I couldn't do anything about it and I started calling on the name of Jesus, taking the authority that in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to leave this situation. Mm -hmm. There was a power that came on me like I've never experienced mm -hmm. before that God was able to move, move a mountain in, the, in my life and in this situation. It wasn't anything new. God's always been the same. He's always been there waiting to intervene in my life. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't call upon him like that before. So when I did, it felt new to me. But can I tell you, he's the same God today as he was in this scripture. He's the same God that is able to deliver, to cast out devils, and he's given you that authority to do it as well. He's the same God who's able to heal. He's given you the authority to lay hands on the sick and they recover. He's the same God who's able to take that broken relationship and restore it just as he did before. He can do it again. For you today, whatever that battle is, whatever that struggle is, that place where you have let your authority slip away, take hold of it once again. Stand on the truth of God. Stand on the authority that he has given you. And in that situation, speak life, speak truth, speak God's word. It's nothing new, Pastor Jonathan. And we just have to go back sometimes to what God has given us in his word and say, okay, God, I'm not rediscovering it again. You've already put it there. 
Help me to apply it to my life now. And that's one of the things that I think the enemy likes to leverage right now is that even, even in political climates around the world, these are not new things. There's right. always been uh, uh, these different kinds of things because like Pastor Gary said, it is a spiritual that's war. Right. It is. The good news is this, the fact that, it, that this is nothing new means that the same remedies work today as they did before. The same remedies of prayer, mm -hmm. of intercession, mm -hmm. of operating in the authority. Because prayer, a lot of times, you know, we're asking God to intervene, but there are times when God says, I've appointed you and anointed Come you yeah. to speak truth into this situation. There are things happening right now in our world that I personally believe have only been allowed to happen, not because God has been absent, but because we as believers have abdicated the authority that have been given to us to occupy until Jesus comes. That's what he says in Luke chapter 19. And so all we have to do is return to repent to that reality and say, you know what? There was a time when, 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 when America blessed God. Let's bring us back to that yeah. season. There was a time when my household served the Lord. Yeah. I'm not going to get into despair because situations have seemed to, look, there is nothing new under the sun, the scripture says. Right. And so this, this infusion of the devil trying to uproot and find his way into every avenue of life, it's, it, it's been his goal since the garden. But brother and sister in Christ, let's stand on the authority of the word of God. The authority of Jesus has been given to us. He has delegated his authority mm -hmm. to us. We have power over the demonic spirits that are trying to cause confusionist disruption. And we can take the same stand that believers took thousands of years ago to fight against these forces, whether it's on a national scale or within the four walls of our home. We do not have to be afraid. We have the power and let's leverage it to see the peace of Christ rule on the earth. Yeah. There are those of you who are watching, you've been listening about this last point of nothing new. And you thought about, well, it's not new that I've been praying. Mm -hmm. I prayed, nothing happened. I have a word for you from God. He said, to, as he said to Paul, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. Whatever God allows, it's with purpose. So don't give up hope. Stand on his word. Those mountains will be removed but you must trust God. Right. Yeah. We must trust God to do exactly what he said. There are things that he permits, but remember that it's always with purpose. Right. And he said, my strength, your strength, my strength yeah. is made perfect when you are weak. When you've come to the end of yourself, right. God will stand up for you. God will strengthen you in the inward man. So that nothing new didn't mean anything to you, but understand that it's not new that God will do these things. It's not new that God permits some things, but always, always with purpose. And he said, just trust me, right. trust me. I will do in your life exactly what I said. Remember, if you need prayer, the prayer partners are available 888-665-4483. Or you can email us at prayer at ctvn.org. We're going to take a break and go to Pastor Rebecca as she just welcomes the presence of the Lord through worship. So just receive and be ministered to today.
If you've just tuned in, you're watching Move Your Mountain. We've been talking about the topic of authority. The Greek word in the New Testament is exousia. It gives us the right, the right to use the name of Jesus with power. And uh, the Lord says there's, there's authority in his word. He wants us to pray with authority and speak with authority today. And uh, we also want to just remind you that if we're going to be taking communion in just a little bit. So if you don't yet have your elements, would you get a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice in a cup so you can participate and join with us. Remember, the prayer lines are open. If you need prayer, you could call. And we always enjoy and appreciate when people call back when they get their answers to prayer, their yes, breakthrough. Yes, yes. Stacy did that. Stacy was watching Move Your Mountain. Good choice, Stacy. <laughs> when she was taught about living by faith and was delivered from a Thank nicotine addiction. Mm. She had been smoking for many years. And then she received the miracle of faith, which helped her lose that huge desire to smoke. And she's been praising God for his great love. Thank you, Jesus. That is wonderful yes, that God delivered. You, you said that word a couple of times about delivering. We can get deliverance from God. Right. And the thing is that it's supernatural. That's See, right. that's the thing. We may try to do things, but when we lean on <laughs> him, that supernatural God that we serve is not natural. Right. It's supernatural. Amen. Yes. As somebody who's been delivered from, from many, many years of smoking cigarettes, it's, it's, it's weird because I think it's been it's almost 25 years since I had one. But that's such an amazing testimony. And those are not small things. Amen. That's right. Anybody that's ever struggled with overcoming any kind of addiction, whether it's overeating or drug addiction or anything like that, these are big things. So we celebrate with you. We are thankful. Thank you for so much for letting us know. And not only continue to walk in freedom, but share that freedom with other people. We echo Amen. the authority of Jesus Amen. through what he's done in our lives. That's right. And thank you so much, Stacy, for letting us know what God is doing in your life, because you're going to encourage someone else to know that those strongholds have no hold mm -hmm. on their lives as well. So we praise God that you took the authority that was in Jesus and you used Used it and now you are nicotine free. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Smoking's a habit, but yes. but addiction is a spirit. Yes. And, and and we just break every spirit oh of addiction off of your life today. We just command compulsive Jesus. spirits Jesus. to be severed and broken. Some of you have been struggling on your own to try to lose weight, to try to stop drinking, maybe to get off of drugs or prescription drugs or whatever it might be. But I'm telling you, until you get to the root mm -hmm. and deal right. with the spirit, right. you are not going to be able to walk out the victory. Yeah, yeah. And we just... We speak healing right now to those areas of trauma. Oftentimes, uh, addictive spirits are, are attracted and they latch on to places where there's wounds. There's just a, a festering because there needs to be a spiritual healing in that place. And so we just speak healing right now healing right now into those areas of trauma, those places, those strongholds, those, those areas where, where the enemy wanted to get his hooks in you. We just, mm -hmm. right now, we gently remove the hook. We pull it away and we speak healing to the wound for your deliverance. Those spirits, no more. They're not going to have any authority over you anymore because the Holy Spirit does in Jesus' name. Yeah. Yeah. Satan has no hooks in me. Nope. Amen. Linda called a few days ago for prayer for her dad who was taken to the hospital because he wasn't eating. He had to be put on a feeding tube. He is in his 90s. And then she called back today to say he is doing well, 
that they are releasing him tomorrow from the hospital, and Linda is praising God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. No matter what it is that you are facing today, whether it's something like this where you're praying for someone else or for your own healing, your own deliverance, God knows and is able to bring that deliverance mm -hmm. in your life. He's able to bring your healing. So thank you, Linda. Thank you, Stacy, for just reminding us again of how powerful yes. our God is. He is everything that we need today. Amen. Well, we're going to take Holy Communion, so if you do have your elements, we want to encourage you to get them now. Remember what the scripture says. This is a time to remember. Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. He not only took all of our sins, but he took all of our sicknesses, and our diseases as well. He took our sorrows, mm -hmm. our pain. He took everything that you and I might be facing or dealing with today. He was wounded for yours and my transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was on him mm -hmm. and with and by the stripes of Jesus, we were and we are the healed. And so before we take communion, it is so appropriate that we would examine our own hearts and make sure that if there's any ill feelings, any hurts, anything that we are holding on to, that is not of God, that we would just ask the Lord to forgive us even as we forgive those who maybe have hurt us. You know, it's hard to go through life without being hurt and also by hurting other people. It just, it, it just happens sometimes without us even realizing it. But thank God that we have a healer and his name is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. You know, deliverance starts at the cross. That's really where it begins. Because Colossians 2 tells us that, that he, he made a public spectacle yes. over, over the demons that we have the authority that you've been hearing about today. He made a public spectacle of them by, by nailing the, the charges that were against us. He nailed that to the cross. See, and that's where the enemy likes to mess with us. He likes to come back and remind us of what we did because like Pastor Gary said, it is impossible for any one of us to make it through this life without being hurt or without hurting people. And if we're honest, we've done both more than once. And the enemy likes to bring that up and whisper in our ear, this, you're, you're this, you're that. No, the only charge that stands against you is what heaven says about you. You are a child of God. Amen. And that's through the body and blood of Jesus. But if you haven't received Jesus Christ, then right now is the time to make that decision. Why live under the condemnation of the curse of sin? Why continue to live in, in, in weakness and in despair and sickness and fear and depression? Why live that way any longer when there is a free gift of grace offered to you and to me through the body and blood of Jesus Christ, through what he did on the cross for us. So if you've never received Jesus, now is the time. You say, well, how do I do that? It's very simple. You acknowledge your need for him. That, yeah, you're a sinner and you need to turn away from that sin. You need to turn away from those hurts that have happened to you and the hurts that you've caused. And you need to turn to him as the healer. And not just as a nice healing genie in the sky, but as the Lord and creator of all. And you need to acknowledge him as that mm -hmm. verbally. And you just say, Jesus, I, I acknowledge my sin and I acknowledge you as Lord. Amen. And I submit and surrender my life to you right now. And I ask you to come and wash me and cleanse me to make yes. me yours, to deliver me and to give me your authority to walk in a way that I couldn't without your salvation in my life. Jesus, I thank you for what you did for me. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's take Holy Communion. Would you pray over the, the bread? Father, we thank you. 
that you loved us so much. Jesus, we thank you that you were so willing to do the will of our Father, to give your body for us. You took on yourself what we should have gotten. You tasted death so we didn't have to. So we thank you as we remember, we've read about it, the things that were done to you in your body. And then you hung on the cross for us what you endured, and you saw it as joy set before you. Yes, God. We thank you for giving your body for us so that we could live and be in relationship with the Father. Yes. We thank you. All right, take your bread, your wafer, eat of it now, and be healed in the name of Jesus. There, there's someone watching. You've been carrying an offense. Someone harmed you, hurt you, wounded you. You need to let it go. You need to just release them and let it go in Jesus' name. It's doing you more harm than it is them. Now let's pray over the cup. Father, we just thank you today, God, that we have a new name because of you, Lord. We're not known by our sin. We're not known by our failures, but your blood has washed us clean, Father, and we are new in you, and that only happened because you gave your life for us. Jesus, thank you for canceling the debt that was against us. Thank you for taking away every one of our sins and making us clean, Lord Jesus. And Father, we remember that in this moment, we are not the same as we used to be because we are made new in you. Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifice, your lifeblood that you freely gave for each and every one of us in Jesus' name. All right, take your cup and drink and be washed and cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hands and receive, receive yes, whatever yes, yes. you are believing for from the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory. We want to rejoice with Michael from Glen Allen, Virginia, gave his heart to yes. the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Welcome to the family. Amen. We rejoice with you. Yes. Hey, if you're blessed by programs like Move Your Mountain, we've got a wonderful lineup of programs that we produce here in house as well as our national programs. But we need your prayers and your partnership so that we can continue to bring them to you. Would you pray about sowing a seed, whether it's one time or monthly, to keep us bringing the good news of the gospel over the airwaves? Let me give you our address. It's Cornerstone Television Network, 1 Signal Hill Drive. We're in Wall, Pennsylvania, 15148. Dash one four nine nine, and we thank you in advance for your prayers and partnership. We also have a newsletter that is free and yours for the asking. Just call the prayer partner and just request it. We're going to head over to the altar as Pastor Rebecca ministers to us. I speak Jesus. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom 
Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. It's Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name, Jesus. We've been talking about authority. There's authority when we speak his name. Amen. The word of God says all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto him. And when we are his children as we are, we have that same authority that Jesus has given to us. Amen. We can just speak his name. Yes. I think that's why if you get in a uh, situation in your car or something, you say, Jesus, <laughs> there's power yeah. in his name all the time so we can call his name. So speak Jesus, speak right, Jesus. Right, and that's whatever you're facing right now, speak Jesus to the problem. Whatever the situation, you know, Philippians 2 says, he, he was given a name that's above every name. So if your problem has a name, hmm. 
Jesus' name is better than it. Jesus' right. name is above it. Speak the name of Jesus to whatever you're facing and watch breakthrough follow. Amen. Well, we're here at the altar and many, many of you have called. Many of you have emailed or written us. We've got all of your letters, your prayer requests, your emails here. And we're going to join our faith with yours. And even if you didn't get a chance to call, just set yourself in yes. agreement because mm -hmm. there's no distance in the Holy Spirit. Right. Pastor Meyer, would you begin for us? Father, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege. And we pray now for each and every one. Let them know there's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too big Amen. or nothing mm -hmm. too small. Everyone who has lifted their faith toward you, we know you'll hear. Yes. We yes. know you'll answer. Give them the heart to receive what you have spoken concerning yes. them individually, yes. Yes. knowing that you care for each one. And so we thank yes. you. Yes. We thank you. Would you slip over to the piano so you could close us out? Would you pray, Pastor? Yes. Thank you, Father, for your goodness to us, Lord. Thank you that you are perfect in all of your ways. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our strong tower, our mighty God, the fortress that we could run into, Father. And because of that, we come boldly to your throne room and ask, God, that these needs that are represented on this altar, each and every one of them, God, whether it's personal for themselves or for yes, someone God. else, God, that you would bring deliverance in their lives. Father, I pray for Kathy today, who is dealing with lupus, God. I pray for her right now that that disease would go in the name of Jesus, that healing would be her portion, Lord God. I pray that she would have no more problems, no more pain, no more sickness with this disease, God, but that it would go in your precious name. Father, I pray for Renna, who said that she has a need that she's not speaking, but it's something heavy on her heart. Father, I pray, Lord, you know it. You know our down sitting, our uprising. You know our thoughts are far off, your word says. And God, you know exactly what Renna is needing from you today. So I pray that you would intervene in this situation and give her the peace that passes understanding. Father, for those that are, are on this, represented on this table that are in need of family issues, God, family restoration, Father, I pray that you would bring it to them, Father. Lord, that the, the diseases, God, that are, are represented here, God, that you would break every one of them and that you would heal them. God, the reports the doctors have given are just man's report, but God, we believe your report. You Amen. are God Amen. and we stand on your word that says that you are the healer and they are the healed. In Jesus' name, we thank you for the healing power that is going out even as we are agreeing together that diseases and sickness are gone in your precious name. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us and I thank you that you are answering each and every one of these needs represented here today. Yes, God. Praise you, God. Every need for a vehicle right now, Lord God. Prayers for loved ones. Who, who need a financial breakthrough, those who need a, a physical healing miracle, God, we know that none of these things are outside of your ability. And so, God, we just, yes, we just pray yes. that you would sweep over every request that has been laid here at your altar, God, knowing that you are able and you are willing. And we pray right now, Lord God, for those who are asking for prayer for their, their kids and their grandkids who are going back to school. We pray right now in Jesus' name for the teachers and the educators right now, Lord God, that you would use them yes. to instruct children in what is right, Lord yes, God, God, and that you would shut the lying hands. mouths of the enemy who would yes. try to pervert and distort yes, this next generation. We pray for the schools right now, Lord God, that every one of their needs would be met according to your riches and glory, that you would provide everything that is necessary for our kids to grow and be strong. We pray for safety in our schools. We pray for sanctity in our schools. Lord God, that you would turn this generation back to you, Lord. Yes. And that you would bless their learning and their education in Jesus name. Amen. And Lord, we take our authority in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and we bind the strong man Satan yes. over every life, yes. over every family. We bind spirits of infirmity over yes. your health. 
We break every spirit of addiction, every power that's not of God. We shatter those strongholds yes, and we pull them down and we say, be loosed, be set free from the strongholds of the enemy. For it is not by might yes. and it is Robert. not by power, but it is by the Holy Spirit of God, yes. we pray. Thank Lord, we pray for peace in Israel. Yes, Lord. We forbid Iran, restrain them from attacking Israel. Lord, you're the apple of your eye. Put a hedge of protection around them and keep them safe. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Well, we trust you've been blessed by today's Move Your Mountain. Get into church this weekend. Get under that corporate anointing as Pastor Myra just takes us out with this beautiful song, Open Our Eyes. your best gift to help spread the gospel. For your generosity, we will send you 101 Proverbs to Live By Box of Blessings. Soak in biblical wisdom and be encouraged by this box of blessings. Experience some of the most prolific words of the Bible in bite-sized pieces. With colorful borders, each card in this deck of 51 includes a verse from Proverbs to Live By. Featuring one proverb on each side, this box of blessings also makes a perfect pick-me-up gift, sure to encourage for any occasion. These cards will keep your heart focused on God throughout your day. Let us bless you with this life-transforming gift when you donate to support Cornerstone Television Network this month. Make your contribution to this gospel ministry. Call 888-665-4483 or visit us at ctvn.org donate.